From the moment I started my machining adventure, I found myself fascinated by precision. In the realm of lathe work, achieving the right sizes is just one part. Roundness and concentricity are also critical elements. While spindle bearings are crucial for maintaining roundness, in order to maintain concentricity you need a high quality chuck. After 28 years of use, this machine came equipped with a Rome chuck, which despite a few dings here and there, is still in fairly good condition. When I tighten it using the marked pinion, the concentricity is not great, not terrible. Today, we're gonna take the clamping to a whole new level by installing a brand new 6 jaw chuck. A precision chuck, especially from a brand like Bison, is not something very affordable for a home hobby shop. But fortunately, my passion for Weiler machine has paid off. One of its bigger brothers, a Weiler E50 series, has found its way into one of my friend's shop. The knowledge I gained from rebuilding my own machine proved invaluable in retrofitting his machine. So this chuck was the reward for reviving that machine. It's the first time I see a brand new Bison chuck and what I can say is that the build quality is superb. Everything is nicely deburred, laser engraved, the jaws are moving smoothly, nothing binds. As you can see the minimum diameter that I can clamp is 8mm, but that's one of the downsides of a 6 jaw chuck. When chasing microns, the precision flat stones are the machine's best friend. A light touch on the flange ensures that there are no burrs interfering with the chuck. The chemlock system is a dual contact one, on both the inner cone and the back of the flange, so a light touch on the back ensures that everything sits perfectly. With everything stoned and clean, all that's left to do is to mount the cam pins and the locking screws and we're ready to rock. Before mounting the chuck I need to check the axial play of the flange and decide if it needs a skin pass or not. Only the axial play is relevant at this point because the radial play is adjusted when mounting the chuck. Seeing this result reminds me of what Robin Ronzetti said. If the dial indicator is not moving, take a final dial indicator. I think we can call this perfect. So it's time to mount the chuck. The chuck is mounted from the front using three M10 screws. I'm not gonna fully torque them yet since I still need to adjust the radial play. With the OD being concentric to the center of rotation, I can use it as a reference for my dial indicator. Without any adjustment, the runout here is about half a millimeter. By using the four radial adjustment screws, you need to tweak the runout until you get close to zero, or until you get completely fed up. In this case, it was the latest, so I decided to call 0.01 millimeter good for now. A 10mm end mill shank offers a good surface to indicate on. I'm gonna clamp this multiple times in multiple positions to check if the measurement is repeatable. In order to maintain precision, on scroll chucks it's important to use the pinion marked with zero as that was the pinion that was used when the chuck was cylindrical ground in the factory. And now it's time to use the same 20mm end mill shank to make a comparison with the 3 jaw chuck. I'm now at about 15 microns run out, 
compared to 60 microns run out with the old one. This could be further dialed in, but my patience has dried up for today. A challenge that you might have when working on a lathe is holding and machining thin wall parts without significantly deforming them. On a 3 jaw chuck, even with a light grip, it's impossible to hold a part like this without deforming it. But the 6 jaw chuck can do a much better job in these situations. When the gripping pressure is distributed across multiple points, the pressure on each point is smaller. I'm really pleased with this precision upgrade for my lathe. I'm looking forward to its valuable role in my upcoming projects. Hope you liked this video, see you next time.